Hi, this is Sam. In today's session, I'll show you both single sign-on and identity management configuration for the online file sharing platform, Ignite. Identity management from GemCloud allows you to provision and manage both users and groups in Ignite from GemCloud. You can also automatically share files and assign folders and file permissions to users through their group membership. In today's session, I'll be showing configuring SAML SSO for Ignite from GemCloud, configuring identity management, including enabling the group management integration, seeing the end user experience, and seeing how to manage groups for Ignite from GemCloud. If you have already configured SAML SSO for Ignite, you will need to delete and recreate your Ignite configuration. The reason for this is changes were made to the SAML SSO integration to enable support for SCIM identity management. Let's begin. From the JumpCloud admin portal on the SSO page, I'll add a new application, search for Ignite, and click Configure. From the General Info tab, I'll add a display name, which is the name of the application that will show in the user portal, as well as in the uh, configured application in the SSO page. I'll switch to the SSO tab, and in the ACS URL field, I'll change the subdomain value to my Ignite specific subdomain. I'll leave the IDP URL the default value, and I'll go ahead and activate. I'll continue when I receive the confirmation. Then from the main SSO page, I'll select Ignite, and then choose the option to export the metadata. I'll switch back to the Ignite admin portal. And from the settings page, which is available from the hamburger menu, which is the menu with the three horizontal lines, I'll go to security and authentication. I'll scroll down to the single sign-on authentication section. From the single sign-on authentication field, I'll select SAML 2.0. And for the identity provider value, I will select generic HTTP post. From the identity provider configuration section, I'll import the metadata file that I downloaded for the Jump Cloud from the Jump Cloud admin portal. For the default user mapping, I'll change the value from email address to ignite username, and I will enable the use domain specific issuer value. I'll save the configuration and that completes the SSO configuration in both JumpCloud and Ignite. Now we're ready to configure identity management. Before we do, let's take a look at the current users and groups in Ignite. I have three current users and I have one group. So to configure identity management in the JumpCloud admin portal, I'll need to generate an API access token for the Ignite application. Ignite has a specific website dedicated for this purpose. So I'll open their SCIM setup site. The title of this page can be misleading. This site is used for all identity providers. I'll enter my subdomain name and I'll generate the API key. I'll allow access, and then copy the token value. Back in the JumpCloud admin portal, I'll open the Ignite configuration. I'll click on the Identity Management tab. I do want to enable management of user groups and group membership, so I'll select that option. I'll click Configure. I'll paste the API access token that I copied from the Ignite website, and then I'll enter the base URL 
which is my specific subdomain name, followed by ignite.com forward slash pub API forward slash skim forward slash v2. I'll activate the identity management configuration. I received confirmation that the identity management integration has been successfully verified. So I'll go ahead and save. Also from the SSO page, I'll see under the supported functionality that the identity management label is now highlighted in green and has a check mark, which indicates that identity management is now configured for Ignite. I'm ready to add users and groups to Ignite. I'll switch to the user groups page and select the file sharing power users group. I'll open the users tab and select a couple of users. Then I'll go to the applications tab and select ignite. I'll save these changes. Right, those users that I added to the group should be added to Ignite. If I go to the users view, and you'll see that there are two new users, the users that I added to the group in GemCloud. And if I switch to groups, you'll see that the group that I associated with Ignite is now there. If I click on the details, you'll see that the two users that were associated to that group in GemCloud are also associated to that group in Ignite. Now let's take a look at the end user experience. From the JumpCloud user portal, I'm logged in as Berta McManus, and you'll see that I have the Ignite application available to me. If I switch to the inbox for Berta McManus, I'll see that I have an invitation from Ignite. So if I open that email, I'll have the option to log in. My username will be pre-populated. If I click continue, and it will log me into Ignite. It will ask me to confirm my email, so I'll go ahead and resend that email. From my inbox, I'll select the email for confirming my email address. And once confirmed, I will be active. If I go ahead and log out of here and go to the JumpCloud user portal and click the Ignite application, I'll be logged in as well. Back in the admin portal, if I go to users and groups, I'll see that Berta McManus is now active. Next, I'll show you how we remove access to Ignite from JumpCloud. From the JumpCloud admin portal, I'll go back to the file sharing power users group, go to users, and remove Berta McManus from the group. I'll save those changes, and that will cause Berta's account to be deactivated within Ignite. I can also suspend Roberta, or I can also delete her as well. So you'll see now that Berta McManus is in a deactivated state. So now let's see what the user experience is like. From the Jump Cloud user portal, if I click refresh, Ignite is no longer an application in my list. And if I try to log in directly to Ignite, I'm redirected to the Jump Cloud user portal with an error message that says I haven't been assigned access. The last thing I'll show you is how to manage and remove groups in Ignite from Jump Cloud. From the Jump Cloud admin portal, I'll select the file sharing power users group. I'll change the name from file sharing power users to file sharing internal users. And I'll save that change. I go back to the Ignite admin portal and I look at the groups view and I refresh, I'll see that the file sharing power users is now file sharing internal users as it is named in the JumpCloud admin portal. Then if I choose to delete this group and go back to the Ignite admin portal and refresh, I'll see that that file sharing users group is no longer there, and the user that was associated to that group is now deactivated. If that user had been associated with more than one group and the remaining groups were active, 
this user would remain active and remain associated with the active groups. That concludes today's session. Thank you so much for watching.